you know, him being late is just not a great first impression. Oh, here he is. Uh, <laughs> Jets general manager Joe Douglas. We were just talking, Joe. It just turned 9.06, and we expected to have you on 9.05, so it's a terrible first impression that you've given us here. Oh, being my gosh. Min- <laughs> I apologize. We didn't. We didn't call in soon enough. That's that's on me. The hell is Gal Fan over, doing over there? there. <laughs> How are you guys doing this morning? We're, we're doing, we're doing great. great. How are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. Trying to uh, you know get back. I feel like a bear coming out of hibernation, seeing what's going on in the rest of the world. I've been kind of buried in uh, in free agency in the draft for the last month and a half. So, um, but excited, excited about the uh, new players we've added to the team. Well, congratulations on your first draft and and controlling your first draft. Uh, So is it what you expected from the standpoint of being the man now making the decisions? I think we had such a good process. I feel feel, uh, it was a unique experience, obviously, with the circumstances going on. But I think it also brought brought us all together in a a strange way um, with the technology that we were able to use. you know, uh, our, our collaboration with the coaches, um, you know, the IT department did such a good job setting us all up at our homes remotely. But uh, I really feel like we had great meetings, uh, great conversations. Guys are able, get, we were able to disagree. Uh, no one, you know, put your feelings and your ego aside. We're able to disagree, hash things out in a productive way and come to, to the best, uh, the best player, best solution for the New York Jets. So I feel like we had a good process and it, it uh, it feels good doing it with the, this group of guys. You know, one of the things that struck me is how comfortable and happy you seemed after making these picks. It, going through this the first time is being the guy, of course, and then it being a virtual draft, and you're in your house, but uh, you, you seem very comfortable and happy, and the kids would come over. So, I mean, it seemed like this went very well from you, just from me judging getting a look into your home. Is, is that the way you really felt inside? I t- I'd say it took a couple days to get there. I'd say the first <laughs> couple days was very uncomfortable for me being away from the office uh, because we we moved in our house in September. Like our office wasn't even, like the office wasn't even set up, so it took a few days just to get everything the way you wanted it. But once once we got into the flow, once everybody got used to using the technology, it, it just. It, it was it was remarkable how everything kind of came together, and then um, you know having having everyone right here on your iPad, you know talking through scenarios in the draft, um, you know you're able to bounce from group to group to 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 get to you know have one on ones with guys if you have a question, and it it really did make it comfortable so that you felt like you're actually in the war room even though you're at your desk by yourself, and then the the family being in the room over that was just that was an added bonus that i didn't really expect and i didn't really feel until after we made the first selection that was uh that was an awesome awesome thing you know i would actually say that most general managers probably felt the same way and coaches for that matter because when you watched all their homes and how all their families were around them it was something different that you guys are not used to now i know you're going to get a lot of questions about makai beckton we'll get to him in a second is there anybody else in this group uh, that you drafted, that you were surprised that they were there when it was your turn to pick. Yeah, I'd say a few. I'd say there were there were several guys. Um, you know, we were we were obviously sweating um, when we traded back from forty eight to fifty nine. Um, yeah, I was not I was not going to be completely surprised if Denzel Mims. Um, I wouldn't have been surprised if he was taking the first five picks in the second round. Um, so we were we were sweating on that one, um, and there was a little bit of surprise that he was there at fifty nine. And uh, I don't know if you guys saw the call, but you know he's not he's not happy about that, and I love that chip that he has. So um, you know that that was a little bit of a surprise. Um, I'd say I'd say uh, Bryce Hall was another one. Um, you know he was he was a guy that we were a little bit surprised was there in the fifth round. Um, actually, I mean we we were sweating all these guys to be honest. Um, just where we had them in our rankings and just how our board fell. So uh, those, those are two guys that, that stood out, though. So why did you guys settle on Mackay Becton at number 11 and not maybe Tristan Wirfs, who was still on the board, or one of these wide receivers that were much ballyhooed that went in the first round? Yeah, no, those were all the scenarios that we had talked about. Um, you know, we, we were able to have uh, four, three or four strategy meetings where we go through every scenario um, and everyone has an opportunity to speak their mind, this guy, this guy. I think for us, this was a unique opportunity to get an offensive tackle that 
everybody was excited about um, that has a lot of unusual and unique physical traits in Makai, um, you know, with his length, his strength, his mentality, um, a guy that can really affect the pass game and the run game for us. And, you know, our, our mission, our mission from the outset was, you know, if we, if we ever want to see Sam's full potential, we have to protect him. You know, he, he can't be, he can't be taking shots. He can't, he can't, uh, he can't be taking shots from every angle. He's got to be up on his feet, you know, so, um, we have to, we have to take care of that first. And then everything else will fall into place. So that that was really our mission from the outset. You know, people say that it's a risk reward pick that he is so big that people really don't know what to expect uh, from him. In all your years being a part of drafts with the Ravens, the Eagles, the Bears, and now the Jets, who is the guy that he compares most to in your past? It's funny. I, I was having to talk with a friend that's been in the business a long time. And, you know, when the, when the conversation came up with Makai, it was like, this guy just reminds you of an old school, old school left tackle from like days gone by, you know, just the, just the giant big men, like the, you know, like, I mean, Jay, I'm not, and I don't want to, I'm not going to comp him to, you know, Hall of Fame players, but just, just as far as the measurables are concerned, you know, just big men like Orlando Pace and, and John Ogden and Willie Rofe and, so, like, the, we were just having that conversation, and um, that that's that's those were some of the names that came up. I'm not comping him to those those guys, but um, you know, he presents that unique that unique uh, combination of size, length, and athleticism. So, let's uh, talk a little bit about the quarterback you selected out of FIU, James Morgan, and. You know, we hear that he's a very bright kid. Um, he was coached. Uh, who the coach down there at FIU is? Who Joe? Butch Davis. Right, Butch Davis. All right, so Butch Davis, I would I would think would be a guy that you would trust when you talk to him about his quarterback. Uh, if in fact you did talk to him, which I would assume that you did, w- what are the attributes that that made you select him before, say, like a guy uh, like Jake Fromm? Yeah, Coach Davis has been around a lot of good players in his career. Uh, Miami, North Carolina, and, and pro football. So we definitely leaned leaned uh, leaned on him for for great information when it came uh, to to Morgan. Uh, I think when I think when we watched the tape, uh, we saw the size, we saw the arm strength. Uh, frankly, we saw we saw accuracy. Uh, you know, I think he was one of the top, the leaders in college football and drop passes. So um, we, we saw a little, we saw those numbers as well. Um, but when we, when what really got us all excited is when he got, we got in a room with him, and he, we started just talking ball with him, and just started going over his plays, his offense, his tape, and you know, he, first of all, he's got great energy. Uh, second, his recall is, is unbelievable. He's he's extremely smart. So uh, we just thought this was a guy that. You know, we it's a court it's a quarterback league you can't have enough and if the opportunity fell uh where a player like this was available uh we were going to take a shot yeah quick thing for me joe in regards to the quarterback position i i've been on this radio station now saying for the last two months that i worry about your backup quarterback position and i'm not so sure that this kid's ready to be the backup i don't know you'll you'll see and you'll be able to tell when you see him on the field and then of course you have david fails you know, is this, you know, the way the quarterback room is going to be, or are you guys going to be searching for a potential veteran that could actually come in and help you win some games as opposed to going through what you went through last year? Yeah, I think those are all things we're going to assess over the next days and weeks and months. Hopefully we can get back together soon and really get the uh, physical ses- uh, assessments on the field. Um, but no, that that's going to be something that's going to be fluid with us. Um, you know, um, it's. I think we have great competition in the room as it stands right now, and I think we have three three guys and, and Morgan fails and White that can all push each other. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, we're we're gonna if there's a chance to upgrade any position, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at it. Talking to Jets general manager Joe Douglas on Boomer and Chio on the Fan and CBS Sports Network third round pick Ashton Davis, your first of the two third round picks, uh, Ashton Davis uh, out of Cal. You know, some Jet fans will say, looking at the depth chart, do you really need a safety in this spot? I mean, this seems to be more of luxury than need with a pick that that was that high, you know, in, in the third round. So, uh, give us your thinking on selecting Ashton Davis, the type of player he is, and why you took him where you took him. Well, I guess. 
I guess Judy's in the eye of the beholder in that one. If you view Ashton as just a safety, I'm sure you could question it. I think for us, we, we didn't view Ashton as just a safety. We, we viewed Ashton as a guy that could come in and bring versatility to our back end that could play multiple roles uh, with his athleticism, with his instincts, and with his speed and ball skills. We felt this was a player that could that we could util, utilize in a lot of different roles to help Greg's defense, and not to mention the fact that he could be a he, he can he has a chance to be a dynamic special teamer. So uh, he's another guy that you know once once everyone um, was able to get around him in an interview setting, um, just uh, as impressive of a young man as, as you've been around. So um, you know I, we we see a we see an opportunity to use. He's asking a lot of roles and just excited to get it in here, get him in here and start working with him. Your second, third round pick was uh, edge rusher Jabari Zuniga, and he's out of Florida. And we've been down this road with edge rushers out of Florida as uh, as uh, as late as last year, and um, that didn't work out so well. Um, how do you compare this kid to uh, Polite, who was a total bust last year for the Jets? Yeah, I think I think with Jabari, you're getting someone with a lot of passion for football. I think you're getting uh, a guy that has an excellent takeoff, uh, who's a really sudden, twitched up mover. Uh, there's a lot of explosiveness in this in this young man's body. Um, you know, obviously he was hindered by the injury. You know, I think there was a couple guys uh, on our draft class whose season was was cut short because of uh, injury, or they they struggled through injury throughout the year. Um, so I think that hindered his production this year. I think if you went back to the year prior, uh, this guy was a disruptive. This guy was a very disruptive player. Uh, he's a guy that can that can penetrate gaps. He can get in the backfield. Uh, explosive guy. He's got unbelievable motor. I mean, this guy this guy will, will track the ball as hard as he can. So really, really like really like where he is from a not only a, a physical standpoint, but from a mentality, toughness, effort standpoint as well. So, Joe, we keep hearing all these questions about Jamal Adams. To me, people are making something out of nothing personally uh, with, oh, he's going to skip virtual workouts or they haven't talked contract with him yet like during the draft, which I think is silly. So you know, tell us what your plans are right now in dealing with Jamal Adams, of course, picking up the, uh, you know, making sure that he is a, a, a jet for a, a long period of time. Where does that stand right now? Yeah, I mean, picking up that option was a very easy decision for us. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, two-time Pro Bowl player. So, um, you know, he's 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 uh, not going to be at these virtual meetings, and uh, you know, um, that's uh, these are voluntary. You know, I've said that before. Uh, the plan the plan from here is once we tidy up everything um, as far as our undrafted free agents contracts come in, uh, we tie up a couple other things. Um, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna reach out to Jamal's representative and, and have a sit down. Yeah, I would imagine that he has to realize that it's going to take time. And picking up his fifth-year option, that's just an administrative move that you have to do. Isn't that right? Absolutely, especially for a player like him. That you know, I, I, that, that was a no-brainer for us. Uh, all right, so uh, this kid, Bryce Hall, um, I, you know, I saw this uh, tape in 2017, 2018. Uh, he got hurt last year. Did he run at the Combine or no? No, he didn't. He was still recovering from, from the injury that he suffered in October. Um, so I, I think, I think with, with Ashton, Ashton and, uh, and Bryce, either one of those guys had a chance to run at the combine. Um, but he was a guy, he, he led the, he led college football in past disruptions, um, two years ago. Uh, obviously he had the, the, uh, lower body injury in October that cut his, his season short. But when you talk about him as a player, he's, he's another guy that adds length, strength, um, at the line of scrimmage, when, he, when he's pressing guys, he's got really he's got unbelievable ball skills. Think that he has a chance to to really fit in to Greg's defense. Well, that'd be, that would be a heck of a pick, then you know, one fifty eight. And and I saw where a lot of people thought that that was a really good value pick. As far as Denzel Mims is concerned, the wide receiver out of Baylor, uh, you hear a lot about how he's not a great route runner, but you do hear about how fast he is, how big he is, how athletic he is, and how long his arms are. Uh, I don't understand why a wide receiver out of Baylor who had Matt Rule as a coach can't be a good route runner. That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, you know, and, talk, and this was a great discussion that we had um, in-house with, with uh, Sean Jefferson and Heinz Ward. And, I mean, we, we, have, we have two unbelievable wide receiver coaches. 
and they couldn't be more excited about about what Denzel brings to our team. So um, there, there's just some minor things that we're going to work with him on technique wise, but just just the overall skill set uh, is tremendous. And you know they're they're so excited to get him get him in. Just work, just working on his release, working on his hands, working on just different different techniques that they feel that they can they can uh, make him reach his potential. But um, you know a guy that. You know, had a great. You, know, you mentioned it, uh, uh, Boomer. He had a great college coach in Matt Rule. Um, so you know, we we don't we're, we're not concerned um, about uh, him taking the next step to the NFL. Were you guys in any sort of serious discussions about trading for Trent Williams? Well, we had discussion with a lot of teams on a lot of players. Uh, we we had put out feelers. We had we had had some initial discussions. Um, with Washington, I'm not going to get into actual specifics, uh, but I but I will say nothing. There was nothing serious. There was nothing where it it, it was close. Now you vowed to fix the offensive line. You brought in George Fant, Connor McGovern, Greg Van Roten. You used the number over number eleven overall pick on Mackay Becton. Uh, where you stand here this morning, as we're about to approach May, have you fixed the offensive line for the Jets? I think there's a lot of optimism about our offensive line right now. We'll see when we all get when we get out on the field again. Um, obviously, excited about the new additions, but there has to be a chemistry that's developed uh, among all these guys, and and they can't do that unless they can get together, you know, have dinners, cookouts, um, spend time in the meeting room together, um, and, and be on the field together, and just work work through technique and, and plays. So. Um, we're we're all excited, but we we just we just got to get on the field and develop that chemistry. Now it is impossible to get universal praise on social media these days, but you somehow were able to do that when someone <laughs> posted a picture of you leaving a hundred dollar tip and doing that every time you get takeout and you pick up from a particular place. So, uh, what'd you make of all that fame that you got on social media for that? Uh, it. It, n- none of that was intense. I mean, it was just it. It was it was a just a small small gesture, just because it, it's a great place. First of all, great food, but um, you know, you walk in and you just uh, you, you, it's a place that the family loves, and if if it's a, just a small thing that can maybe help out for a little bit. I mean, it it, I, it wasn't intended to. Um, I was hoping that you know no one would recognize me, but um, look, it got posted, and it is what it is. But uh, um, we, we just—it's just a small gesture. Joe, you're a huge GM. You're the biggest GM in football. God dang it! Everybody's going to know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, you used to be the biggest guy in the in the, uh, in the building. No longer. Uh, you know, Mackay Beckton's going to come walking in there and dwarf you. Uh, Mackay's a giant. He is a giant. I mean, he's every—he's over six seven. He's 360 pounds. He's just a he's a manimal. How big is his? How big are his feet? You know, that's a good question. I don't know what size shoes he wears. Uh, he's got to be. I, he's got to be a 16, 17. How big are your feet? I, I'm I'm only a 13. I'm not, okay. I'm not, yeah, I'm not. I'm not that big. I'm just trying to think if he, he's got a size 16 or 17 shoe, and the way he ran that 40 yard dash was like it just blew everybody away. That, that was amazing to see a man that big run that fast. I think uh, I think once he ran that time, cause, you know, when, you, you don't know what to expect when these workouts start. Um, you know, there, there's there's some some betting that goes around. You know, this guy's going to run this. Okay, I'm taking the unders. There's there's some some things like that, but no one no one ever expected him to run you know close to a a five five flat uh, forty at that size. What kind of what kind of kid is he? Did you have a chance to spend uh, a lot of time with him? We did. We spent a lot of time with him virtually. Um, we, and, but at the combine, we we were, we, we had uh, our twenty twenty five minute uh, time frame time slot with him at the combine, um, and then we had several talks with him uh, through through the Microsoft Teams uh, video conferencing, and so um, and you know just doing doing the the work that we did on his background and. He's he is a jovial, fun-loving guy. Um, you know, big heart, uh, good heart, gentle giant off the field, but the guy that has a has a switch that he flips when he gets on the field. And 
you know, he, and like he, he'll tell everybody, he, he enjoys he enjoys putting people on the ground. So um, <laughs> you like you like hearing that when you're talking to a, a young offensive lineman. Did you see the first video that was shown of Adam Gase in his house? Because the, the first one that was shown where the dog comes in, his kids run in, Adam looks like he wants to get the hell out of there. It's just so funny. And then, and then someone must have got to him because then all the other videos, he looked happy and everything was oh, great. But, yeah, but I, but the, the first one was hilarious. I, I didn't. I didn't, guys. So I didn't have a TV. I didn't have a TV with the with – the, uh, broadcast on uh, in, in my office so i would i would step out you know when they're talking about a player or whatnot so i didn't see a lot of those a lot of those in home um cuts yeah. that they did, you gotta did go back. someone did tell me about the rubik's cube with the sun which is which is pretty impressive yes but, uh, <laughs> now that that doesn't surprise me <laughs> all right so uh, last one from me so now that the draft is over we understand that you've got stuff to do on draft to free agents deal with jamal adams being a general manager it doesn't stop but it's not as intense as it was before the draft uh the little free time that you have now in this isolation while we're still in it what are you doing in that free time you know i think I think we really won't have free time. I mean, look, back in the old days, old days, I'm talking about last year, um, <laughs> you know, in, in the past, you would uh, you, your free time really came after the mandatory mini camps in the middle of June. I think now for us, um, you, you take a little time, you decompress. I think we'll get together as a group. We'll, we'll really do some self-scout on our process. Um, we'll, we'll get together with uh, Dan Zbajowski, Phil Savage, Chad Alexander, Rex Hogan, and, and our team, and we'll sit down. Okay, what what went well from what what would what did we do well from June to to now? Uh, what can we get better at? And um, and we'll 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 sit down. We'll just kind of hash out our process and and try to improve it. We'll get ready. We're going to get ready for unrestricted free agency uh, next year. We're getting ready for the draft next year. Um, you know, our, our scouts will do some spring scouting on next year's prospects. Uh, we'll, we'll get some uh, some initial pro grades in on unrestricted free agents. So, uh, so we're just we're 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 starting to turn the page uh, hey. to next year, next year's guys. Joe, final question for me, and I and I brought this up to Gio with the question mark about when the season's going to start and all that other stuff, and there's a potential for college, and we're hearing all of these different collateral collateral plans for college just in case. Do you do you think that the supplemental draft is going to be heavier this year than in normal years? Is there, are you hearing anything in that regard? Yeah, that's a great point, uh, Boom. I think that's something we've got to be prepared for. Uh, we haven't heard, um, but with with all the uncertainty that's going on uh, with the season next year, it's something we've got to be prepared for, and we will be. And you know, in the past, the supplemental draft uh, it, it's 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 never been a huge pool of names. I mean, I think the most the most of, since I've been in the league, maybe eight to ten guys. Uh, we'll see. I mean, the, the eligibility, I mean, you have to be three years out of high school. Um, so, you, you know, most most of the times with the supplemental draft, it's, it's for guys who lost eligibility somehow uh, at their school, whether it was grades or for a character reason. Um, this year, um, you know, I haven't talked to the league directly about how they're going to handle the supplemental draft. I'm sure that's going to be a. That, I'm sure that's something that they're working through right now, uh, and I'm sure they're prepared for for a list of names that could come through, and we we will be too. Joe, thanks for the time this morning. We appreciate it. We love talking to you, and hopefully, we'll get a chance to talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.